You may be wondering about that vacant house down the street, the one that's been empty for years, a target for trash and trouble. Our Target 8 investigators have discovered that it could be owned by one of the biggest banks in the country. In the business, they call it shadow inventory. We got a tip, and Target 8 investigator Henry Erb found neighbors just spilling out of their houses onto the snowy streets to tell him that they are fed up. It's terrible. It's terrible. I'm, I'm so says Linda Cardosa about the house down the street. It's been sitting empty for years. This is 1541 Turner on the west side. The bank foreclosed in 2009. You can see how long it's been from this tag on the door. It says the place was winterized in 2010. And the city notice on the door, so old that the ink has faded off of it. And check this out. The place is padlocked, but this door doesn't even close. Well, either fix it or tear it down. We wanted to see for ourselves how many bank-owned houses there are and what they're doing to neighborhoods. Target 8 investigators searched City of Grand Rapids assessor records for banks listed as homeowners. Then we hit the street. We looked at all of them, house by house. This door, once again, another door, not even closed, and found neighbors hot under the collar even in the icy wind. Ever since we've been living here, we've had people trying to break into it left and right. That would be the house next door, 1,070 11th Northwest, foreclosed two and a half years ago. We found a fresh list of housing code violations taped to the door, demanding J.P. Morgan Chase fix siding, windows, and a fence. They send people over from the bank constantly, and they do jobs on it, but it still looks like crap. Just in Grand Rapids, targeted investigators found 86 homes owned by big banks for at least a year some much longer. Banks foreclosed on 55 of them in 2013, 16 of them in 2012, a dozen in 2011. Two have been in bank hands since 2009, one since 2007. Only 17 had for sale signs on them. Experts tell us the longer a house sits without heat, without people, the more it deteriorates and lowers the value of other homes in the neighborhood. The window's been busted out and they've had to board it up. That window was replaced because someone threw a brick at it. Jessica Skelton lives next door to 558 Highland Southeast. She says it attracts strangers who hang out, drink, try to break in, and leave trash behind. You've been cleaning this up yourself. Mm -hmm, I have been. Yeah, you know, we come out here and we clean up trash. The bank has owned it for nearly four years. It's owned by a bank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's bank owned. I don't understand why a bank owns a property and keeps it for so long without putting people in it. And that is the question. We wanted answers. Government red tape. That's what the Kent County Land Bank's David Allen says slows the sale of some of the foreclosed houses. He says red tape wrecked this foreclosed house at 919 Adams Southeast. He shot this video after the pipes burst. He says he warned Wells Fargo several times before it happened, but... The bank couldn't authorize the winterization until they got authorization from FHA. So the pipes broke before they could drain them. I was sad because it was a beautiful house. It was a house that was in great condition. A Wells Fargo vice president wouldn't talk about specifics. He says when a foreclosed mortgage is owned by investors or insured by the government, they have to hand over the house in good condition. They have to get repairs okayed and bids for the work, time consuming back and forth. I'm not convinced that that's where the pokiness happens. I'm convinced. Helen Lehman runs the nonprofit housing rehabber New Development. I'm convinced that it's with the larger banks that have too big a portfolio and they don't have the department set up to do this. A Flagstar Bank spokesperson also wouldn't talk about specific houses, but told me that all the banks were overwhelmed by the financial crisis and are still trying to work their way through the backlog. Nonprofit home builder Jonathan Bradford agrees. With the volume of foreclosures that happened being dumped upon a system that was never sufficient in the first place, properties are going to get lost. Such as 124 Graceland Northeast, J.P. Morgan Chase foreclosed three years ago. It wasn't even on their books. It wasn't until I called them that they actually found it in its obscure record. But it was no secret to the neighbors that it's been sitting here empty. We have to sit and look at it every day. We have to sit and wonder, is it going to get burned down, or are we going to have people living in it that don't belong there? Neighbors look at the unpainted porch posts, roofing tar splattering the siding. J.P. Morgan Chase didn't get back to us. I don't like it. I think it's horrible. I think it makes our, our, our wonderful neighborhood look like trash. 
So what's a neighbor to do about it? Well, it's easy to find out who owns a vacant house. In Kent County, you can search property addresses online at Access Kent, or you can call your local tax assessor. I think it's important for neighbors to join together and do the same thing we're doing. There's a certified letter. Let's start getting crabby about it. I'm targeted investigator Henry Earl. Interesting. Here's something else you can do. Tell the Kent County Land Bank or the nonprofit housing rehabbers about bank-owned houses in your neighborhood. They say that they can work with the banks to get the houses fixed and then people back in them. We do have links to contact them along with this story. You can find it at woodtv.com.